Okay, so we're spinning this loop at angular speed omega in the presence of an external magnetic field, and we'd like to see what epsilon induced will be. So epsilon induced is negative d phi magnetic by dt. Uh, signs don't matter much in this case. We're just looking for values. Uh, so what is d phi magnetic by dt? Well, you've got an external magnetic field that is uniform and doesn't change with time. You've got an area that doesn't change with time. But what changes in this case, well, look at d phi magnetic by dt. d by dt of phi magnetic is integral v dot dA, which is simply b a cos theta. Remember, phi magnetic in this case is just b dot a. And this is equal to, well, uh, yeah. So the only thing that is changing with time is theta. And theta is equal to, as this, as this loop spins, theta is equal to omega t. So that's equal to negative d by dt of b a cos omega t. And that gives me, well, d by dt is omega sine minus. So this becomes omega b a sine omega t. We're not being very picky with the signs right now, but epsilon induced looks like this. And if this loop has resistance, then I induced, you know, resistance R, I induced will look like uh, omega b a sine omega t divided by R, right? And, uh, you know, you have now, what you, you created a uh, AC current, right? Um, you have a dynamic current, you have alternating current, and this is exactly how you power things. You've got a, a, a turbine that is spinning either because of steam or smoke uh, from if you're a dirty turbine, uh, nuclear reactor, uh, you got a waterfall, you got, you know, what determines the power coming out, is power going in, minus the losses. So you have a, a, a good idea, let's so say you have a river flowing and you got so much water going in, the height is whatever before it hits the turbine, you can calculate the maximum theoretical capacity of the power station based upon how much, how much water flows, uh, flows through the uh, uh, generator. Okay? So, um, um, so we have now, you know, so what I'd like to think about now, guys, is where is the maximum value for this I induced? Let's say you talk about, you know, this is uh, I or epsilon induced, it's a sine function. Think about how we can make sense of where the maximum value of this epsilon induced is. Let's talk about that graph a little bit in context in relationship to this diagram here, right? Where do you think the maximum value for epsilon induced will be? Here, there, right? Think about that in context with the graph over there and see if you on your own can come up with where you think the maximum current induced will be. Uh, what I'd like to tackle now is, you know, does the current flow change if I go this way versus that way? I'll let you think about for, for that for a little bit. But for now, let's say that this thing is going this way, right? I'd like to see where the induced current will be. So as this loop changes, eventually we'll, you know, as this loop um, turns this way, as the angle changes, we are going to go from maximum flux to eventually zero flux. So the flux is being reduced in the forward direction. So we need an induced magnetic field that will bolster that, you know, so this is B external in this case. We need B induced to bolster the magnetic field in the forward direction because we're losing flux in that direction. So B induced is in this direction. And for that to happen, you have to have a current flowing, you know, I induced will have to be this way. Does that eventually change? Look at that graph. Look at where you expect this to change and give this some thought. Okay? Um, so this is your typical generator. Right? You have some sort of loop, basic, basic form, spin it. You can crank it manually if you want uh, and uh, find out how much power you can generate. We're going to pause here and continue with the next part.